Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be doing a little bit more work with the Ruger M77 in 243. Now, a quick note to the YouTube moderators that are checking this video out, making sure it's okay for monetization. Uh, we will not be doing any firearms modification in this video. We are on a uh, designated shooting range and everything is set up specifically for shooting. This is a safe area. <clears throat> As you remember uh, in the last several videos, we've been having some issues getting this M77 Mark II to group very well. Now, we did kind of settle in on a load that was shooting uh, somewhere around one and a half MOA, uh, but I'd like to see a little bit better. Uh, so after the last video, the guy that owns this rifle got a hold of me and said, hey, you know what, I think let's go ahead and put on a different stock, and one that's built a little bit better, and see how that works. If you'll remember, uh, the stock that came on this rifle had a lot of contact up in the front end, and the whole thing was plastic. There was not a bit of metal reinforcement anywhere in the stock. There are a couple different options for replacement stocks for the Ruger M77. Uh, one that I might have gone with personally uh, would have been a wood stock, one maybe uh, made by Boyd's. But for this specific rifle, uh, since it does have a stainless barrel, it is set up to be kind of an all-weather, uh, get beat up through the deer woods, uh, in the rain, in the fall, to desert pronghorn uh, out west. He wanted to go with his synthetic stock for this gun. There are a couple of options for synthetic stocks on the market, and I cannot remember what the other one is right now. I believe Bell & Carlson was the other option, uh, which was a little bit uh, more expensive than we wanted to go with on this rifle. The stock that he ended up choosing uh, is an overmolded stock made by Hogue, and this particular stock has uh, aluminum pillar bedding at the action screws. Both action screws get torqued down quite a lot uh, on the M77, and I think that that aluminum pillar bedding is going to help us out quite a lot. Of course, it is going to come down uh, to the barrel and how well it shoots, but we are going to test that today. The other main reason for choosing this stock is, is that it does free float the barrel. Now, being a synthetic stock that is not reinforced along this section, it does have a little bit of flex and that you can see out here. But when I was testing the free floating of the barrel, sliding a piece of paper uh, in between, even with as much flex as I could torque on the gun by hand, you could not uh, get the piece of paper to stick when sliding up and down. So this barrel is going to be free floated all the way back to the action at all times. And that is, I think, gonna help us out quite a lot. Now, there's only one way to find out for sure, of course, and that is to do a little bit of shooting and test it. I have taken a couple of shots since I put this stock on uh, just to get it roughly sighted in because I am gonna be having my target camera down there and I don't wanna hit it. There was about a four MOA shift in point of impact uh, switching stocks. And that tells me that the pressure, not only on the barrel, but probably also on the action uh, is quite a bit different here uh, with the Hogue stock in place. As far as other differences in this stock, it does have a little bit of a flatter fore end with a little bit wider profile this way. It does have quite a bit of uh, tackiness to it as it's kind of a, a rubber coated stock. And it shoulders and sits super nice. Um, I liked it right away as soon as I got it put on the gun. The only other difference that I can think of is that this stock drops off just slightly less in the back. It's maybe a quarter of an inch of difference, not a whole lot. Uh, but the gun does sit fairly well on the cheek. Uh, it's just maybe a little bit lower than I would set it if it were adjustable, but for a hunting rifle, this is absolutely perfect. And uh, it's in a good zone where I think you can uh, get a good cheek weld, 
shooting prone off a bag or in whatever position you have to happen to be in. Back in the last several videos, uh, we kind of ended up on an H4350 load that ended up grouping wide and a 4064 load that grouped quite a bit better, but the velocities are lower. Today, I want to test both of those. I've got a few shots with the H4350 left over. If you haven't been following the 243 project on this channel, we are shooting the 90 grain Hornady ELDX. Uh, this is a Ruger M77 Mark II, 243 Winchester, and I believe the barrel is a 1 in 10 twist. With all that out of the way, I'm going to go fire up the target camera, uh, get the chronograph dialed in. We are going to be confirming some velocities today, and we're going to take a couple of groups with this rifle. The target is at 50 yards for this test. Uh, we'll be shooting at the top and bottom targets there, clear on the right-hand side. The top target we're gonna start out uh, with the IMR 4064 load. I do have more of these loaded up than the 4350, so if there's anything we need to tweak or dial in um, after shooting this first group, we can do that. I'm gonna be taking three shot groups to start out with. Uh, I may end up shooting a five shot group just to see how the uh, barrel heat affects things now that it's free floated. There's a lot of things uh, that I'm kind of be, <clears throat> there's a lot of things that I'm gonna be looking at today. I believe my chronograph is set high enough. All right, we'll get to shooting. All right, guys, that is an excellent start. I am gonna go ahead and make this a five shot group uh, because we can. If we do get shots thrown wild though, I will chalk them up to barrel heat and I'm not gonna worry about that too much because the three shot groups are what we are really paying attention to. Yeah, that one's strung a little bit lower. All right, still, all in all, that is not too shabby. I'd say we're sitting right about an inch. They're at 50 yards, uh, two MOA, so about what we were getting before, but that three-shot group is what we're going to be going off of, and I'll measure that uh, here afterwards. I'm gonna let the barrel cool down uh, good and long in between each one of these groups. So I'm gonna shut everything down, give the gun probably 20 minutes to cool, and then we will uh, take a group with that H4350. All right, it's been about a half an hour. Uh, we're gonna shoot with the H4350 load. One thing I don't think I mentioned after shooting that first group, the way this stock handles recoil is completely different than the other stock. This thing feels like shooting a 223 in comparison to the last stock. Now it is a little bit heavier. Uh, I did weigh the two stocks on the scale. This one adds about 10 ounces, uh, which is a consideration, but it has settled down vibrations and tamed the recoil a little bit. And it just feels a lot better to shoot. Now, it didn't have a strong recoil before. It's 243, right? It's not gonna have a ton, but this thing settles it down noticeably. All right, let's shoot this uh, H4350 load. And I am going to just shoot a three shot group here. I may change my mind on that in a minute, but we'll see. Uh, shooting for the bottom target there. Crap for accuracy. <laughs> so that tells us what we need to know. Uh, I'm curious. I know the gun is hot right now. I know that. But I'm curious. I'm just going to fire three shots with the 4064 load at that top middle target and just see what happens. 
this easy. Fairly rapid succession. All right, so barrel heat is definitely still an issue. I will let everything cool down one more time. Double check the action screw torque now that the gun has been in this stock and shot several rounds. And then we will uh, reconfirm with the 4064 load and make sure it's still shooting decently. folks, I'm pretty sure that tells the story. <laughs> it's looking uh, pretty darn good for this load, this stock, and this barrel. Uh, we'll go get, we'll go down to the bench, measure those groups just to be sure, and then uh, I think we're going to call this one. All right, folks, so taking a quick look at this target here, um, we've got these cider shots here. Ignore those. Uh, but for the actual groups, we were at 0.55 inches for those three shots, and then these opened it up. Um, but remember, we're going on the three shot groups. And then the next group we shot with the 4064 load uh, was that 0.3 inch, nice little clover leaf. I uh, remember this is a 50 yard, so double all these numbers for approximate MOA values. Uh, the H4350 load shot super wide, and then when we shot on a hot barrel, we got just over an inch um, with the 4064 load. Now, you will notice probably right away that the point of impact uh, for this group and this group are slightly different. I don't have a good explanation for that. Uh, I have shot a few more groups with this load to confirm, and we kind of get an average of, of these two. They haven't all been as good as uh, these two groups for sure. So I'm not going to say that this is a one MOA uh, load and gun combination, but we are doing better for sure with this stock on the gun. That, I think, is going to wrap it up uh, for this load workup. I do plan to do uh, one more video concerning this load, and that will be... Uh, prepping the brass and doing the whole load up of about 150 rounds of this uh, to get to the guy that owns the gun. And I'm just going to talk in that video briefly about my bulk loading practice and how I'm doing that right now. Uh, other than that, what's left to do uh, with the 90 grain ELDX is sight in the gun at 100 yards. I might do a bullet drop test out to two or 300 and see what the point of impact looks like. Just for some data, uh, I do have maybe 15 more shots that I need to fire form in this brass before we do the loading. So I think uh, that that may or may not be a video depending on how interesting that ends up being. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please make sure you're subscribed to the channel. We are about wrapped up with this 243 project, but I've got a lot of load workups coming in the near future. So thanks again for watching, and y'all have a good one.